Welcome, everybody. We've got almost 100 people on so nice. far. We had uh, over 200 registers, so we'll see who jumps on. Welcome. Make yourself comfortable in your own home. We, you can see us, but we cannot see you. The only way we will see you is towards the end where we ask if anybody wants to be part of the master class and you'll raise your hand or you'll chat and tell us and we'll allow you to be on with diane and sarah and everybody would see you then but other than that you know make yourself at home um so uh yeah and you can chat throughout this whole section so you can make comments or you can ask questions uh matt our wonderful zoom admin is here matt farron uh from fort collins colorado uh he's one of my helpers with vineyard school of worship teacher instructor and uh super we're thankful for him. So he's going to be kind of fielding the questions. We'll try to get as many of your questions answered as possible. You can also uh, send questions directly to a panelist um, and they might make a note of it. You could, you know, send them your email and they could respond to you, but just know that you can, you can communicate in a few different ways and we'll try to get to everybody uh, as much as possible, as thoroughly as possible. So my name's Mike O'Brien. I'm the director of the Vineyard School of Worship. We are a part of Vineyard Worship, which is a part of Vineyard USA. We're a lovely family of churches, about 500 churches around the country and several more hundred around the world. And uh, we have this School of Worship where we are training and teaching and equipping people from all over. So uh, in quarantine times, we are getting creative and we're saying, okay, let's commit some Wednesdays to training and learning, and we welcome you. We're thankful that you're here. Um, just a few things. For, so for the next few Wednesdays in May, we're going to continue to have these Wednesday webinars of just training different things. Last week, they did some pastoral things, talking about the, the heart of a pastor in this time. Uh, we're hoping to do some CCLI and like answers about publishing and things like that in a few weeks. Um, and then in June, June and July, we're committing our Wednesdays to the Vineyard School of Worship summer session. So if you are a worship leader age 18 to 35, uh, or there's a little wiggle room in there, um, we're going to have basically a Zoom and R every Wednesday with a highly skilled, highly talented person from uh, within the vineyard and even people from with, outside the vineyard to do some teaching and training. So you'll find out more about that. We'll send you a link to register. Uh, and you can also just download the content regardless of whatever age you are. So uh, yeah, so thanks for being a part of this vocal training. Uh, man, there's so much going on with vocals. <laughs> In the church, I don't know if you guys have seen the article with the uh, scientific head where the panelists just met yesterday and talked about how we're never going to sing ever again uh, in a group, right? And everybody's just freaking out. And it is a little scary. There are some real things going on now. And uh, part of this, we want to discuss that and kind of go into, uh, you know, what it means to be a singer in the church in this time. And um, also just kind of zoom out just practically. How can we grow? How can we continue to uh, nourish and enjoy this gift that God has given us all? But for us as singers in the church, worship leaders, what do we do? How are some ways that we can grow? So really excited to have Matt on the call helping us admining this. Uh, Sarah, uh, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself a little bit. Tell us who you are and what's going on in your quarantine world. Hi, I'm Sarah Elmer, and I live in Allentown, Pennsylvania. Um, I uh, have three kids and a husband, and we are all currently working at home. Um, I uh, volunteer as a worship leader at my church, and I work uh, part-time as a graphic artist for a healthcare network. So um, for the most part, we're all in the same house and we are navigating what it looks like to do school for the kids and work from home and uh, stay sane. But um, overall, it's been actually like a, a great experience for us. So. Awesome. Cool. Well, thanks for being on the call. Super thankful for you. Uh, when I asked Diane, I said, Hey, who's somebody that could, 
uh, just kind of help us out and be part of the call. She said, Sarah Elmer, <laughs> right away. She said, she loves you and we love you. You're our mm-hmm. gift. Oh, well, the feeling is mutual. <laughs> gift. Uh, Diane, want to introduce yourself and tell us what's going on in your quarantine world. Sure. Um, I'm Diane Thiel Sharp. I live in Marietta, Georgia, and I'm in this uh, big house with just me and my husband. I have um, We have four kids together and four granddaughters. All live close, so it's like they're so close and I can't squeeze them. So lots and lots of FaceTime, little drive-bys and things like that. And um, I am <laughs> creating a fairy garden in the backyard for when they can come over and <laughs> And they're making things for it. So just finding ways, you know, creative ways to connect. And um, our experience has been, um, you know, it's such a different season in my life. I was in that season, you know, with kids at home and have often imagined what that might be like for me right now. Well, it's not. Right now we're, you know, we are the ones, you know, making, making some pretty amazing meals and having some really sweet time together. We live on a little lake that's really scenic. And so um, it's a very, it's been a really good time for some very deep introspection, um, some intercession, you know, it's just, that's the season of life um, that I'm in right now. And I'm working from home, uh, doing vocal coaching right from here. And uh, that's been an interesting shift. I'm at um, Vineyard Community Church with Mike. It's the first time in all these years that we are together in a church and that's been extra delightful. And I am really loving just being a support person. I'm kind of the on call, you know, my husband and I will, will pinch in in some worship or help with whatever's needed and pray. And, um, so that's the season that we're in. That's great. And you are a vocal instructor with Jan Smith at jansmith.com. That's her website. If you want to check that out, you'll see Diane, how she fits within the context of all that. But tell us how that's been, how that normally is and then how that's been in quarantine being a teacher. Yeah. Well, it's definitely been an adjustment and uh, one that at first I was pretty um, concerned of how I'm a very hands-on teacher and I, um, you know, singing is such a physical act and it's, you know, I'm really watching and, you know, in a 360 mode, just kind of seeing what's going on with the body. And, um, and so it's, it's been some adjustments. So typically we all have our own studios at the, it's, it's down in Atlanta, beautiful studio full on with, um, recording, uh, a, a, you know, top notch recording studio. We've got engineers there. We've got, uh, there's a handful of us coaches. There's only five or six of us coaches and a guitar guide as Pro Tools, all that kind of um, teaches Garage Band, different things like that for our songwriters, and so we're a really tight knit kind of family. And uh, it's been strange; I haven't seen them in a couple months. I think we're having our staff meeting uh, Friday, um, but we've all had to just make adjustments. And you know, like anything, I am actually beginning to really, you know, once I got through the nerves of it, I, I'm finding some things that are really unique in in really good ways of doing this. I, um, uh, and some of my clients are having some, just because it's different are having some new growth that's happening just because it's coming in from a different angle. And so, so I'm trying to really celebrate where I am, be in the moment and, um, and use it. That's great. That's great. Well, I want to, give you the floor in a minute, just to kind of do your normal thing. If we were all at a, all at a retreat and we are having a Diane Thiel vocal workshop, we'll kind of move into that mode in a little bit here. Um, But first off, can we just talk about uh, church in quarantine? Many of us have pivoted to a lot of us for the first time looking at an iPhone, uh, looking at a camera uh, with some freaked out uh, tech guy that's running around (laughs) like two months ago. You guys remember that? (laughs) Oh, gosh. <laughs> um, <laughs> and now we've all kind of settled into a new until we buy new gear and then we have another freak out week, you know. Um, but we are all in this new space, right? And we, uh, you know, I'm just curious from you, what are some things that you're learning in this process? What does this mean for us as those who are now looking? at ourselves singing, we're, we're watching ourselves sing three days later. Uh, we're maybe evaluating ourselves more than ever before. Um, encouraged and both 
feeling critical. Uh, what are what are some thoughts that you have for us in the church as singers that's going on now in quarantine and church on screen? Yeah, for me. Yeah. Um, well, I do have a lot of um, worship leaders from some large churches that that come to me and. Interestingly, they're finding, moving to a more acoustic vibe, finding that part of their voice. They're used to kind of Mm. being in a more power, more forward kind of, you know, let's get everybody going kind of a place. And then suddenly they're just sitting in a room by themselves staring at a camera. And I think there's some really amazing things that are are happening, at least with the clients that I'm working with. They're learning... um, what we've tried, I've always tried to talk about nuancing, you know, there's more than one speed. There's a, you know, and how do you uh, support through all of those different places of your voice? And a lot of us just, um, you know, we, we get into a rut and just sing from one place all the time. And suddenly uh, the, the, the intimacy and the, you know, sometimes not even having a mic, it's literally just you and the um, nothing, nothing juicing it up or making it, you know, fabulous. And, um, I think there's a lot of vulnerability in, in that, but I also think some people are really responding to that vulnerability. I think that that's a really amazing opportunity for those that aren't listening with the critical ear that you think they are. They love seeing your home and your, and who you are. And um, like they're sitting in your living room, like a small group and worshiping, you know? Yeah, that's good. Um, Sarah would love any thoughts you have on the quarantine and singing to a camera and, what are, or things you've seen at, from people, you know, who are, you know, what are some thoughts you have anything to add to that quarantine land? Well, I definitely want to echo what Diane said of, um, I think that it has made us, um, find a different spot. Like, I think that so often we can attach sort of what the live feeling is in the room and really rely on that to find the energy to like Mm -hmm. push, you know, like a lot of what we do, um, has like this ramping up, um, And really in the context of sometimes an empty room, sometimes it's just you and um, your tech team and they're, you know, whispering to each other, trying to make sure everything's going well. So it's like the external cues that you might use to stay in the zone. um, It kind of resets everything and you are having to find these, uh, like, how do I create a dynamic without trying to sing over a drum set or without the, the normal feeling I might have. I don't know. Like, I think it does, uh, invite us all to explore different nuances, like within our voice and within our like dynamic range. Yeah. Yeah. One thing I would add to that too, is, um, as you were talking about that, a lot of us, um, as singers, we tend to start singing off of momentum as opposed to of support and power and, and just being present to the moment. You know, it's like, we kind of push ourselves over the top hill and then we, you know, you're going to have some energy for quite some time if the hill's mm. tall enough. Right. But, um, when it's just you and a piano and a voice, you, you, you know, I think it, it's an incredible opportunity to start to learn and maybe do a reset on your support. Now, you know, we'll do a couple exercises like that just to, 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 because even in exercises and warming up, a lot of times I'll see clients using momentum. I call it like a weighted wheel kind of a sound, you know, because they're, they're not really using the, the kind of correct, you know, muscles to get themselves into that place. And, just relying on that. And that wears the voice out like crazy. So. Yeah. And this other thing of, of momentum of if we're doing our job well and we're singers in the church, you know, we, our hope is that people are there to join with us in, in one of the most uh, profound and unique ways for humanity to worship uh, is to sing. Right. (laughs) Is that the congregation would sing, and the most beautiful thing is that we take an ear out and we hear the congregation singing, right? right? We step away from the microphone, and they're singing. We're all together. We're going at it together. And, you know, right right at the start of, of this whole thing, I had just started to draft my book, which 
I wanted to call the most important instrument. <laughs> and the idea is that the congregation is the most important instrument, that if they're not singing, if they're not engaged with the living Lord, then what the heck, you know, what, what are we doing? Um, and all that's been stripped away. Like we don't get the feedback, you know, now the, the other day I had this experience where I was looking at my iPhone doing like a Friday night worship thing. And I was watching the eyeball, like how many how many people were in, you know, and just different who's, Oh, a heart and a right. care hug person. And, a you know, it's like, huh, that's not the same kind of feedback. Yeah. I'm but it's our to need you. to measure everything, isn't it? <laughs> isn't there like a deep need to have a measurable way? I think yeah. one of the questions was like, you know, I, I, I loved it. It's like, I usually leave my eyes open and respond to the spirit. So now, well, the thing is the spirit is still in us. And so again, it's like, we, we have to go deeper, you know, to, to listen and trust because he does have his eyes on all the people. Right. And so learning to listen in a deeper way. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And even just the whole idea of like, um, I know for me, it's a struggle when I'm in that room and you are used to the stimulus of like people being there and there is a real thing to leading with your eyes open and responding to the visual cues but I like what you were saying, Diane, of like, there is a different piece of what does it look like to even use your spiritual imagination, like imagining people in their living rooms or, you know, even just participating while making their kids breakfast. Like it all sort of, it just changes the way that you do it, but it's still the idea of like exploring a different mm. piece of it. Yeah. I feel like the Lord gave me a picture, Mike, when you were talking yeah. about the, um, you know, how it, the, the, the scary thought of things changing. We're so used to singing together and with each other. And as you were saying that, I feel like the Lord just gave me a picture of us being in a circle, but then all facing outward and, and singing. And it's like, he's, mm -hmm. you know, this is just a different posture for us. And I think this could really bring a whole new um, imagination of, um, of, of an outwardness. You know, I keep my door open when I worship and people on the lake can hear us worship. I mean, it's like, it's going out in different ways. You know, I have friends just popping on and seeing on Facebook that I'm doing a thing and they're like, Oh, you know, somebody that might never have, have seen that yeah. before. So it's, it's an interesting dynamic mm -hmm. with some real beauty inside of it. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Consolation, silver linings in this. Come Holy Spirit, we need you. We need your help in this. That's so good. Well, great. Well, um, I'll just, yeah, Diane, maybe you just kind of do your thing, kind of walk us through some things. And uh, as it develops, uh, you know, we can move into more, you know, collaborative um, or as questions come in. But yeah, just kind of... Uh, Walk us through vocal health and wealth. Yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do. I want. I want to. I just do want to say one thing though that it, it is so important to me that um, it's never just technique for technique's sake. Technique has got to um, um, has got to serve what we're doing. Right? It's got to. Um, we're not trying to. One of the one of the things that's been hardest for me about becoming a vocal coach is just seeing people get so stuck in their head about technique. Is my jaw in the right position? Am I doing, oh, oh, yeah, did I, you know, and then, and then starting to maybe lose a little bit of the joy. And that is not why I'm doing this. Like, I just want to do it. If that is the, if that's the result, all of you know how to sing. Many of you have had, you know, you, you've been put into a position because people have noticed that you have something, you, you, um, you know, we're all different levels, but I don't feel like my job is to teach people how to sing. Um, I feel like my job is to help you bring awareness to anything that is getting in the way of what you're wanting to communicate musically, right? Um, some of my favorite vocalists are not great vocalists. I will take somebody who's authentic every single day, right? But I, I, I want my clients to be making stylistic choices, not just a well-worn path and a habit, because that's the only way I know how to get there. And maybe that very thing is, is actually hindering you from the thing that's in your artistic heart to accomplish, right? So, so I want to say that on the front end because I'll, part of my spiel is, okay, we'll talk about all this technical stuff and maybe an optimal position and things like that. 
everything I say, you're going to find, be able to find some great singer that's doing exactly what I said not to do. They've earned the right to do it. They're getting the job done. They are accomplishing what's in their heart to do. Right. But, but if you are running up against a wall and you keep hitting this wall, maybe you need to try something different. And so if what you're doing is working, then keep doing it. Um, but, um, I always tell folks when you go to worship or if you're going to go on stage and perform, that's not the time to be thinking about this stuff. Just go do what you do. Enjoy it. Really invite the Lord to just let you hold on to the joy in that moment. And, and I, like, I would be so sad as if what I bring to the table causes people to be more critical of the gift that's inside of them. Right. So I want the things that we talk about today to be empowering. So maybe there's going to be some places you're like, wow, I never noticed that I actually do do that. And let me investigate and be curious as to whether that's getting in the way. Might not be, but there's also a really good chance. I still find things like, wow, like it's crazy how our body intuits often really incorrectly (laughs) what feels like the right thing to do for something like, like, you know, that high note, you feel like you've got to reach for it and bring your chin up and tighten everything to get it. Well, if you don't understand how vocal cords work, um, you may not realize that that's actually really hindering what you want to accomplish. So um, I want to talk just for a few minutes about just the physiology of it. Um, please stop me anytime if I'm getting too long or whatever I want to, I want to give what is helpful. So, um, we can change gears in a moment if we need to. Okay. Um, and my feelings won't be hurt. Um, okay. So first of all, one of my favorite questions when somebody comes in is, um, so how many vocal cords do you have? And usually there's probably about 80% of the time, there's sort of a deer in the headlights kind of a moment. Some with touring artists, I, I've had that conversation and I will be full disclosure, that was me when I came to Jan. I'd already had a full on career as a contemporary Christian artist, as a worship leader and as a touring rock band. I'd done all those things and I didn't know how many vocal cords I had. I know how many strings are on the guitar. I know what to do to take care of um, you know, all the equipment that we used but I didn't know. And it was, it was a wake up call for me. Um, I thought, you know, I think that's probably important information. If this is my career, you know, even if it's my hobby, even if it's just something that I love to do, I think that would make me better if I know. So um, now that you've all thought about, well, do I know? Lots of you do know, but there's probably a lot of you don't know. No shame in that. Just there are two vocal cords and they work in tandem. Okay. That's right. Two. Um, I have had answers like, uh, 27 or, you know, 14. And I'm like, you know, if that, if you do have that many, we are going on the road and we're going to make a whole lot of money because you're a whole choir right there, (laughs) but you have two vocal cords, same ones you were born with. There is not a man-made synthetic material that can replace your vocal cords. You can get a new hip, I know, because I have one. <laughs> you can have a metal hip in your body. You can have, you know, all, they can do so many things, but they, they have not been able to um, replace vocal cords. There's not a material like it. And there's nobody that sounds like you in the world. I think that's stunning. Um, have you all had the experience where you've had a, a phone call from an old friend or you've just heard somebody's voice in a crowd? And in a moment, you know who that is, right? I had a beautiful experience with um, our, my old guitar player who I hadn't heard from in years and years and years, called me after my, um, my first husband passed away. And he got my phone number, so I didn't, didn't pop up. I didn't know who it was. I answered the phone, and it, all he had to say was, hey, Diane. And I knew who it was after all these years. So I, I think... Um, the, the mystery and the beauty of the voice, you know, just wrapped up in that, that we have a vocal thumbprint, right? And we want to be as authentic as we can in that space. And, um, okay, so you got two vocal cords. They, when I ask anybody, where are they? Typically the answer I get is um, somewhere here. It's like, yep, 
you're hot and cold, you're hot and cold. It, um, they literally right in the middle, guys have your Adam's apple. They sit right there behind it horizontally. Okay. So um, they're like two little strips made out of like a soft tissue um, cartilage, kind of like tip your nose into your um, to be your ear, a lot of flexibility within there, um, surrounded by a mucosy layer. Some people call them vocal folds and they work. They're about the size of like a, maybe a, a, a dime or a nickel. Their men's are a little bit bigger than women, generally speaking. And, um, they work by vibration. Okay. So they're, they're connected at one end and they work kind of like like a very quick vibration like this. Okay. Really, really, really fast. Um, hundreds of times, you know, a second, you can't see it. You've got to use a strobe light to actually see it. I know that Sarah has been strobed before, right? You have some stories. Um, I have, right. And, um, I think it's a good idea if you're, if you're doing this really full time to have a baseline strobe done at some point, just say, so you know, what your cords look like in a healthy place so that there's a comp- comparison to have. If you ever have to, you have some anomaly happen or something and you've got to go and check it out. And Sarah can definitely speak to that too. And I want her to share some of her story in a bit, but, um, so, um, they work on vibration just like any acoustic instrument basically has, if you boil it down, kind of three components. There's something that vibrates. There's something that activates that thing that vibrates. And there's something that resonates, right? So on a guitar, we've got what vibrates? Strings, right? What activates those strings? Pick or finger, right? Whatever's making contact with the string to cause them to vibrate. And then where do they resonate? In the side of the, the cavity, right? That's why guitars sound so different. It depends on the, um, the make and the structure and the kind of wood. And all those things are going to make a guitar sound like what it sounds like, what it's, what it's made up of. And if I were to take your prized guitar, your acoustic guitar, and you let me borrow it, and I took it and I filled it with sand <laughs> and gave it back to you um, after you, you know, gave me what for, you would, you'd, you'd know that if you strum those strings you wouldn't have hardly any sound. There's no bounce, right? There's nothing coming forward. That's why, you know, an electric guitar, obviously, there's, there's nothing. We have to artificially amplify that sound, right? We have to create a man-made acoustic. So the human voice has the same, um, actually, everything was kind of, you know, the, I think the human voice is the inspiration for every instrument, right? So um, the thing that vibrates in our body are those vocal cords. They vibrate together. Okay. And, um, the thing that activates, and I want you to just try to think ahead and imagine what you might answer and think about this, um, is the breath. How beautiful that the source of all of it is, is breath. I mean, there's so much holy, so spiritual about this act. It's also why the enemy just can shame us like crazy around this place and get us. I think we get so hooked, you know, not like it's not like with a guitar, we can take it off and walk away from it. You know, we get, we feel badly about something that we've done or performed or we're judgmental about our voice. We walk away and it's still right here with us. It's like, do you like me? You know, it's like what, what I do is so connected to our souls. Um, so, um, so we've got the, the vocal cords that vibrate, we've got the breath that activates, really important. And I will tell you that consistent airflow is the key to healthy vocals, to healthy vocal cords. And it's why, as I said um, just a little bit earlier about this momentum work, generally it's like bursts of air followed by just a complete release and then another burst of air. And what you're doing in that moment is you're slamming your cords together because that air is part of what, besides the musculature stuff that works around, the air is what's keep getting those, those cords together. So just to give you an idea of what it would look like, I'm just, uh, again, remember this is a, is a horizontal action, okay? But I'm just gonna show you, like, if I go to take a breath, they're gonna part. When I go to make sound, uh, and they're vibrating very, very quickly and very, it's a very, minute sound. If I let some breath through there, ah, they're slightly apart and they're kind of hitting each other. And so we can get, when we get in that space for a sustained time, we can really hurt our cords. Or if every time we go to, to, to make sound, we hit hard, ah, 
you know, from our throat and we slit, we literally are slamming those cords together. And I have had a couple of clients came to me that, um, had coaches that actually use that language. Okay. Now you want to slam those cords together. I'm like, no, 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 no. We're going to take that out of the vocabulary because it really translated to how they approached singing, right? It's a gentle process. These are little tiny, these, these cords are little and we, you know, we need to, to, to love them. Right. Um, I'll just, I'll just continue to talk about the functionality of the cords before we move on to the resonance side. Another really beautiful mystery about the vocal cords is pitch. Have you ever thought about how does pitch change? Other than you thinking, I want to go up. I want to go down. I, I'm not like, okay, to get this note. Okay. Let me get it. You know, the technique is to, it's this fret, right? No, you just kind of think it, right? You probably have never really thought about that. And for you to understand how that works is going to help you be a, a better singer. Okay. So um, think about a guitar string. And if you have um, a guitar string, how would you make it higher? What are you going to do? You're going to tighten it, right? You're going to turn. And that string is going to, what's going to happen to the string? It's going to get a little tighter, a little bit longer. And it will vibrate faster, you know, 442, for, you know, all the different that it's going to vibrate faster. Consequently, if you loosen it, you get brown, 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 gets lower, right? So the vocal cords are like all those guitar strings in one. And they are moving. Think of how, like, if you had to do that with your guitar string, go from, you know, a C. Up to a G quickly, down to an A. Like, oh, oh, oh. Think about what you'd have to do with that, you know, ho, ho, to get that. That is happening on these tiny little chords, even as I'm talking to you, right? As I'm changing my pitch, if I get really excited, I'm up higher. My chords are getting a little bit tenser, right? And if I'm like, oh, you know, telling a story and I'm, oh, oh, my goodness. And I go down, my chords are at their thickest, loosest, vibrating the slowest. Another really important thing about, so, so again, that motion is, you know, this way. And so they're, they're, they're elongating just slightly. It's so imperceivable and small. They just sit way inside. They're way inside that bony structure, the larynx. And they, um, so they tighten and loosen in order to, to create sound, right? So there is a little bit more natural tension that happens as you go higher, Right until you hit that passaggio, right? Uh, and, when you, and that breaks, and you all of a sudden you have kind of this little release for a moment, and then you go back to tension. You go kind of, you kind of loose to tension, loose to tension, right? Um, as you're moving kind of to a different place in your vocal cords. Um, and we'll talk about that little break because that's a, everybody wants to talk about the break. Um, but uh, so that's how you're changing pitch. And it's a, it's a muscular thing. So to do, um, workouts that help you to have pitch accuracy and to move between pitches quickly or very small, like a chromatic scale, which just simply means every single half step, right? Um, it's just, uh, you don't do that often. And so to get those tiny movements so that you're not overshooting, you ever overshoot a pitch, you know, things like that. So, so that's the basic functionality. I'm doing this so fast. I hope everybody's everybody good so far. Helpful. Fine. Okay, good. Um, great. Um, passaggio. Yes, I can circle back to passaggio. That's simply uh, the sort of the classical name for the break in the voice. You know, people like Sarah McLaughlin have made careers on the break in the voice. It's a beautiful tool. It's one of the tools, right? But many of us, for, for most women, it falls around um, A, for most of them, above middle C, ah, it can feel kind of unstable. Like it doesn't know if it wants to be, ah, or ah, you know, don't know where. Um, and for men, it's typically around F or F sharp above C. They're not that far apart from each other where that break is, right? And you guys know that, you know, that, that space, when all of a sudden you move up from that E, that's, I do so much work with guys on that shift from the E to the F to F sharp right in there. Um, so the passaggio is a very natural break in the voice. One thing that's different about contemporary singing is we 
try to widen that, what, what Jan likes to call it is the equatorial line, right? There's sort of a natural break, the, the, you know, the Southern, the Northern hemisphere of the voice, right? As contemporary vocalists, we work to try to widen that line so that we have options, right? A lot of people will call that the mix and what we can talk about that a little bit sort of can reside in a sort of in a different sort of resonance space than some of the others. Um, chest voice being like you, you, if you put your hand on your chest and you say, hi, how's it going? Hi, I'm Diane. And you can feel that vibration right in your hand. That's your chest voice. Right. And if I move up to my, woo, my head voice, I, woo, hi, woo, hi, I, I can feel sort of the, the, the Northern Southern hemisphere. Stop laughing at me, Sarah. The Northern Southern <laughs> hemispheres and then that place in between tween is i'm trying to get from one to the other uh, right there it is so l- learning to to widen that little that that line so that we have options because you might want to sometimes be in your head voice or you might want to be in your chest or you want to be in what would be called a mix that to me is really more like a bridge it's just the it's a way to get to the other side without your listener really noticing that you even got there right? Instead of just a, a skipping over, right? So that's, that's that part. Let's talk about resonance for a second. So um, where would the resonance chamber be on a human voice? Any thoughts? It's your mouth. It's just kind of everything that's above the vocal cords, your, your sinus cavities, all that frontal place, all that space in the back of your throat, that is your sound stage, right? So if you want a sound like Bruce Springsteen, you're going to close your teeth together and you're going to sing right through, right through, right? You're going to keep it kind of minimal. But if you want, you know, so, so again, never hear me say it's right or wrong. That's not the point, right? It's, it's what sound do you want, right? What, what are you going for? Are you singing this style? And you really want something fat and round sounding. You know, you, you want something that has a warmer tone to it and uh, more resonant. The bottom line is the microphone's only going to pick up what you let out, right? So you are going to have to work harder if you keep your mouth closed, because less sound is going to be bleeding through. And so you will have to push a lot more. So the, the, the great thing about just having space and open mouth is that you're not working against yourself, right? So resonance, um, you, you can also think of, you know, an artist like Cher, you know, she's singing at the back of her throat all the time. She's not using, and, but that's her sound, you know, in a moment, right? And um, like Michael McDonald used to had that kind of low, you know, drop lyrics kind of in the back of, you know, thing, uh, sound, you like that impersonation. Um, and then there's, you know, uh, some of the pop singers sing way up in this more kind of front part of their face, a little more nasally, you know, and, and so, and there's everything in between. And I think, you know, I think I, you know, in my early days, I think I just sort of happened on certain things and some were really cool, right? But knowing that, wow, I can kind of aim my voice a little bit in different spaces and I can change my sound. And it's, uh, it's like going from a, a box of, you know, the crayons they give you in kindergarten with 16 colors. You know, you can make a lot of gorgeous stuff with that box. If you are really creative, you could probably build a whole career, on those colors. And that's great. But you remember, you know, like fourth grade and you got the the 64 box with the sharpener on the back and suddenly there were eight shades of dark blue, right? There were, you know, there's all these different colors. And I think of using resonance um, as just having more crayons, more tools, more ability to color your sound and do something up there. So um, look at some questions. So those three uh, vibration, what, what were the three words? Uh, vibration? Something that, that vibrates. Yeah, vibrates. Something, that vi- something that vibrates. 
Something that activates. Activates. And something that resonates. So the vibration would be the wood of the guitar or our body would be... No, the vibration the would be the, 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 the strings on the guitar are the... Strings. You know, because w- the wood is really be more part of the resonance chamber. It's taking the sound Absolutely. that's coming off of what's vibrating. And the strings connect with vo- vocal cords. Is that the connection? Exactly. Yeah. Awesome. And the, the raw sound that comes off of a, of a vocal cord is not all that beautiful. It's really who you are and your structure of your body and how you use it that makes it sound so unique. And then it's the activation would be the guitar pick or your fingers Correct. or the breath. That's breath. right. And you're saying that breath is the money. It is... What can, yeah, I mean, you know what I what I say to my clients <laughs> is, do you remember in in Sunday school when um, those of you who went to Sunday school and you know the teacher asked any question, it could be you know who walked on water or who parted the sea, it didn't matter what the question was, and you'd be like. Jesus, right? <laughs> and even if you were wrong, you were kind of right, right? So even if it will, yeah, we can, we can, we can spin this. Yeah, it was Jesus somehow for sure. So diaphragm's kind of that for us as vocalists, right? It's gonna, it, it's gonna dial back there at some point because we don't have that. You know, we don't have any air going over the, yeah. going over the um, cords. And so. Um, so the diaphragm, we haven't really talked about much. The diaphragm is a muscle. It's not a container. I think some people think of it like I've got to, you know, fill my diaphragm or, you know, breathe from my diaphragm. And, um, uh, and I think of the, the diaphragm kind of like a, um, like a bicycle pump, right? You know, when you, when you draw it down and it pulls the air in. Well, interestingly, the function, it's like a, like a dome shape kind of muscle that fits right up under your um, ribs, right? It just kind of resides back in there. And when you take a breath, it comes down and comes just a little bit forward, right? So while um, one telltale sign that somebody doesn't have a good understanding of that is that when I ask them in my, in my office and we're doing our first um, time together and we're just, you know, part of it, I have my little clipboard and we're going through all this stuff. And it's like, let's take some deep breaths for me. And almost every time it becomes this. <sighs> so, th- so they have somewhere in their brain at some point they've connected their shoulders to this thing. Well, shoulders don't have anything to do with it. Right. And in fact, the lungs start down here and they, they expand. Your lower ribs are actually hinged to accommodate breathing. Think about how a baby breathes. Those of you who have babies at home, man, their little bellies, they just, wow. Like the, and, and when they go to cry, they take a big fat breath. They hold on a second, right? They set up that diaphragm. They get ready. And then they let it go. And they stay expanded. Ah! You know, they, they just, they, and they just, they just let it go. Right. But they, it's not like, ah, ah. that's not how they're crying. Right. They're not collapsing. They're setting up their diaphragm. We were born, you guys were born doing this. Your body knows how to do this. Okay. This isn't a, this isn't like a brand new thing to you. Um, in fact, in the morning, Let's say you wake up and you're sleeping on your back. Just, just catch yourself breathing before you've had a moment to, you know, just, just notice that your shoulders are most likely just back on the bed. Nothing's going on there. All the actions right around your middle, up and down, up and down. Um, because you kind of revert in those moments, right? You come back and you, um, you, you settle back. It's very interesting if you kind of watch how kids um, breathe. There's no such thing as um, infantile laryngitis. That's kind of crazy when you think about how long a kid can scream, like a colicky baby. Like you think they should be losing their voice by about now, right? But it just keeps going and going because they're technically doing it as, as God had made them to do. You know, he, he did that for us so that babies can get help if they need help, right? And so... It's a good thing to remember that, that, you know, Lord, help me just remember, you know, what you've done. I think a lot of like yoga and breathing and all stuff is, is about just trying to, trying to connect back with how we were made to breathe. It's really good for you too, that those deep, you know, what does your mom say when you were a kid and you get all nervous because, you know, when you hit two and three and you start having those fits and you're upset, the breathing begins to change. 
It doesn't in babies in the same way, but as you get a little bit older, the breathing ends up getting shallower and shallower. <laughs> and if you're scared, you hear a noise in the night, first thing to be impacted is your breath, right? And it's like this. And it's like, okay, okay, take a deep breath, right? That's our, that's our, we know intuitively that this isn't the right response. And yet a lot of times with our nerves, with, uh, singing and things like that that's our that's our visceral response to 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 breathe very in a very shallow way and it's so epic that i mean as you're talking about the breath the pick the activation you know and we have to be careful right with the language you know the the enemy's attacking this thing in the church which i i suppose he is in this in this way in the global church I mean, literally, it's the breath is the conversation. <laughs> we're, yeah. we're breathing on each other and we're passing this. Isn't you know, that it, interesting? It's yeah. really epic. I mean, it has so many yeah. layers. But for us to understand this, it's a it's a great thing. Is it okay if, we, if we're in this physiological space, uh, just to have Sarah kind of share the, uh, yeah. you know, your experience with uh, trauma in the voice and kind of like what went down with you in this place as, uh, as a singer? Yes. Well, um, so I'll try to make it quick, but growing up, um, I always sang and, um, I started taking professional voice lessons when I was 12, um, and worked with, um, classical coaches, uh, and then did some college, uh, under vocal performance. And it was really my thing. Um, so coming into this space of contemporary worship, it was like my slippery slope of like, all of my coaches wanted me to sing classical music. And then I sort of started to dabble in some jazz and like musical theater, which were all within, I know. <laughs> um, uh, so, you know, then I went, walked into a vineyard youth group and one of the guys was singing, um, the brought me to his banqueting table, you know, <laughs> it's, I remember from behind a piano that had flames painted on it. <laughs> <laughs> and so I just kind of like fell in love with that and began to sing that way and noticed that vocally I was starting to feel things that I had never felt before in a bad way. Um, I was able to get the sound that I wanted, but really had to sacrifice a lot of my technique. Um, but made adjustments and worked with different coaches to sort of copy paste some of the things that I had worked on um, and still be able to get a modern sound without, you know, having issues. Um, I went, uh, I did some recording a few years ago and after a particularly like strenuous um, week recording, I just noticed when I got home that I was having some patches where uh, I had dead spots. So as I would do my scales, na, 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 I would have just no sound. Um, so I went into a prominent um, vocal, uh, he's a, um, a surgeon, but he's an ENT. So I went to see him in Philadelphia and it turns out that um, I had, a, sorry, I have a train going by, but I had paralysis in my vocal cords, which they actually believe to have been something I've always had, um, which made me really wish that when I had young, was younger and more uh, early on in my career that I had gotten that scope. Um, because I would be able to say, you know, this paralysis is a result of something that has happened, or this is just the way I was made. So anyway, what that meant was that in order for me to create sound, like my resting position uh, is not with the cords touching. So this is sort of my resting space. And so when I have the breath and I begin to make sound, what happens is that I have to use my throat muscles to constrict, to make my vocal cords touch, wow. um, which I was doing, I had modified myself because that's a really hard thing to notice if you're not the one doing it. Um, so, um, basically what I had found out is that I had developed um, cysts on both vocal cords because of this hard onset sound, which you had talked about where you go, but, you know, and the thing that we had discovered, 
um, with my speech pathologist was that for me, my singing voice was not actually the main culprit in my dysfunction. It actually is my speaking voice. So I normally talk around here and I cut things off, which is all right. Um, so I had to take six to eight months to learn how to talk again, basically. And, um, a lot of my warmups were really focused on this easy onset speech, you know, light sounds. Um, but I think that what I realized, uh, was I had worked so hard to, have perfect technique, right? Like to check all the boxes. Mm -hmm. Um, and even in the midst of that, like there were things that just happen. (laughs) Like, so I I think it's, I love what you're saying, Diane, of just, these are things that you want to slowly begin to implement so that you can, um, not, you know, have a measuring stick where you measure yourself as to, is this right? Is it wrong? Um, but just how can you, start begin to do things that will allow you to have the voice that is yours and not feel like you have to copy sounds, but like you can find your true sound and then add filters if you want. Um, and also like you just, I just lost my train of thought, but, um, you know, being able to do this, it brings longevity. Cause I think the thing I realized was, am I going to be able to sing yeah. in five years? You know? So that's sort of my, really quick, probably all over the place synopsis of my experience. But the encouraging thing is that you, your voice returned and you were able to, um, get back to singing. Oh yeah. Well, and my, the great news. Yes. And it was interesting because my ENT himself is a bit of a perfectionist. So he wanted to go in and to remove things. And I was really lucky to have, um, a vocal coach and a speech path who were basically like, there's no such thing as perfection and you sound great with what you have. So what does it look like for you to love yourself where you're at with your voice and work to make lifestyle adjustments to have a healthier one? But yes. yeah, so that was like, it took a lot of the fear out of it because I think when you're a, in, um, when you're a singer, people, at least in my sort of area you think of all the people who have had vocal surgeries they get held over your head a little bit you know like you don't want to end up like this person so it was like a very um it was a great experience for me in recognizing that like ultimately we have control over parts of it but maybe not all of it you know so yes it was encouraging to be able to yeah I remember when that happened and how scary that was. We we talked during that time and it was a very scary time. And, um, I had a, not as severe as that, but I had a similar, uh, situation like that when I first moved to Atlanta, where I, my voice was just, just, just began not being available for me. I just felt it was, I was just tired. I would go for things that were really normal and I could get it out, but I was working so hard. And it was at that time that I ended up going to Jan and, um, first became her client in the late nineties. And the first thing I did is I went and got scoped, um, went and got that checked out. And for me, I had, um, sort of a, a a silent reflux going on. I didn't know. Let me tell you what, I can't tell you how many cases of reflux have been at the the source of the, the culprit of, of what's going on. Part of, there's other things too, you know, cause you start compensating and, you know, re-traumatizing. And so it, it builds on itself and, um, you know, years of playing in clubs with bad sound systems and singing really hard and, um, and then just not good eating. And, um, so it was, it did take some lifestyle changes. I, I realized how little water I drank at that point and water y'all. I I'm telling you what, that's the first thing I'm going to tell anybody that comes to me is having a hard time. I'm just going to say, how much water are you drinking? Mm -hmm. You know, um, an athlete would could never function if they were not 
drinking all the water they needed to. And, and, you know, we're, Jan always says we're vocal athletes, right? We are putting our voice, that's a very different place than just speaking all day, taking your voice, pitching it higher. Remember we talked about the chords twerking, a uh, little more tension on your chords. You're taking them to places um, that you don't go in, in your regular day. And for us, we're singing first thing in the morning, right? Um, so you should be, Saturday is your major hydration day. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I would really up my hydration on Saturday. So I kind of come into the day already hydrated, start with water and just drink water, just all water. You know, we were joking about coffee. I love coffee, but it, it isn't my friend in close proximity to singing. So I just, that's a, that's a sacrifice that I make in those, in those spaces. Um, you know, go to half cap, just come down a little, do, do some small changes, but your body will respond quickly. Um, so, so physical changes, eating really well, drinking tons of water, a couple liters, of, you know, a day, just really, uh, uh, getting saturated, which by the way, I want to say something about the physiology. Your vocal cords sit above your windpipe, right? Not where all the food or the water goes. So if you are feeling crunchy, you know, you're like, oh, I just need to drink some tea and water. Um, well, good, do it. But it's not touching your cords. It's not doing a thing. You're, you're late to the game at this point, right? You're, you're, you are chasing something. So it'll eventually work its way through your system and, and hydrate, Um but if you're already feeling really thirsty, you're, you're way past the point of, of what your body needs. And, and so that whole, you know, I'm all about doing the herbal teas and the throat coat and all that stuff. But, but I'm here to tell you what it's doing is it's coating your, your, the lining of your throat. It's not doing your vocal cords. Although the way that it is helping your cords is, cords is only by the steam that's created in your mouth. And that you breathe in. So one way that would be helpful, the only way you can instantly hydrate or not instant hydrate, it's not like, you know, one of those little sponges, you drop it in the, but to get moisture to your cords immediately is to breathe it. That's why you sound so great in the shower, right? Mm -hmm. You ever notice like, wow, you know, cords are, and, and part of it, there's lots of factors there, acoustics and all that, but really that hydration factor is a really good part. So it's a great place to do some warm ups and things like, because your cords are just so oh, loving all that, soaking that in. So having a steamer, you know, a personal steamer um, in your, our green rooms at the building that we used to go to. Um, so now, <laughs> now having a, a steamer at your house, um, but, but, but tools like that, that can just help you stay hydrated. Yeah. So th this idea of, you know, here we are in our, into this wow. vocal thing and, and, that wasn't a hint or anything. That's just, I, I want to make the connection that like, I went to Jan Smith and I thought, I want Jan to hear me sing and teach me how to rah, sing cool and be great and be a great singer. And I spent an hour with her and she never heard me sing, but she just talked about the physiological parts of it. Right. Mm -hmm. And just even from that, those, that one lesson or that few lessons, I've been remembering that like yeah. just the idea that like hey we can see a guitar we can see a clarinet and we can maintain it but we're so used to not seeing our voice right. and it is connected to our heart and our soul and our Absolutely. spirit um so i know this might seem like man this is like a science lesson like <laughs> teach me how to rock you know teach me how to sing harmony teach me how to make it through the whole service well a lot of this is the foundations for that you know, learning that this is a fragile thing we've got. And if we don't take care of it, yeah, like most of the people we hear, like around 50, 55, it's like, all right, it's been real. Thanks. You know, but we've lost range and we're right. irritable and we don't like, you know, so what does longevity look like? Um, so physiological, I don't think this is wasted time or space to think about this. Mm -hmm. I don't think it would be bad, especially if you're in your 20s or 30s, to find a vocal centric, what would be the word, an ENT that kind of gets it on the the vocal side that would yeah, have reviews that singers have gone to. That's it. That's the important thing. Uh, not all ENTs are created equal as far as that. There's ones that specialize with singers. And, you know, we have one in Atlanta that we, we send our clients to. So, uh, Diane, we've got maybe 20 
20 minutes left. Um, would love to get a, uh, a couple master class. If anybody would like, would be willing to sing. Um, we're not going to do it right now, but maybe in like five minutes, we'll call on you. Let Diane kind of finish the arc of where you were going okay. and we could move on to some practical, yes. uh, actual singing, kind of see what some of this looks. And it's going to be weird doing that from your house, but you know, if, uh, if you're willing to do it, maybe, uh, uh, you could, what could they do? Maybe they could chat with Matt, send Matt a chat and just say, Hey Matt, I would like help. And, and Matt will kind of see if we can find one or two or three volunteers that'd be willing. And once you become a volunteer, we'll make you a co-host. So you would pop up in on the screen and we'd see, um, and hopefully hear you. So um, so you guys be thinking about that in a few minutes, we'll move to that, Diane, okay. and you'd kind of finish your arc yeah. of, of what we need to know and hear. Well, We're think, obviously just scratching the surface, right? Yeah, I mean, it's, you it's know. the, the, the voice is just beautifully, wonderfully mysterious. It just, it really is. And, um, one thing I just want to make sure, and we'll, we'll I'm going to give you just a couple of little exercises, um, is to talk about the value of warming up and cooling down your voice. Um, and practicing your song is not warming up. It is not warming up. You don't run a marathon to get ready for the marathon, right? You don't play the game to get ready for the game. You do all that. You break it down, right? And you get all the individual skills that are going to be called on when you're on the court. And so um, it's amazing how many folks don't, even give it any consideration to warming up, right? But the thing is, that might work for you for a while. It did for me. <laughs> got me got me pretty far. And then all of a sudden, and for me, it was in my 30s that it just, it wasn't as easy. You know, I still was able to push through and get it done, but I get the job done. But, but I worked harder and was, was doing things like I dug deeper into my dysfunction <laughs> vocally to try, cause you just keep doing the same thing, just harder, right. Just to make it happen. And so it took a little time to kind of, um, really put that value into my life. But that, that's one thing I would say is just to, to, to do warmups and, and warmups are the function of a warm up is to warm you up for the event, right? To get you ready for whatever you're going to do. And even if you're going to practice some songs at home that are kind of hard songs that have those notes in them that are troublesome for you, make sure you spend some time warming up first before you get into that place. Get yourself towards there. So, um, uh, and then there's the cool down, which was a whole new idea for me. And it made all the difference for me because I was, um, at, I think, you know, I was singing pretty heavy and pretty hard. And so, and then just shutting up. You know, you get, you do it and then you, and then nothing. And it's kind of like when you've just run a marathon, like I've ever run a marathon. Like I imagine what it'd be like if you were running a marathon and working your muscles to that point where all that heat and oxygen and blood flow is your muscles are, you know, I've, you know, just fired up. And if you just stop, um, you all know that you can start having a uh, lactic acid deposit in those muscles and, and they seize up and, you know, you can really um, cause, you know, a lot of pain and you can cause damage vocally. It's a very similar thing that happens. They, there's, you know, they're inflamed. They're kind of, they, they're here. And we want to get the, the cords sort of back to that speaking level because this part, you know, there's not a lot of stress on my vocal cords and when I'm speaking in this space. Right. But if I'm up here all day and I'm yelling or, or, or singing like that, that is, um, you know, I think some of the moms at home right now with their kids might be need some vocal warm ups for the day. Um, but so I want let, I just want to kind of quickly run some vocal uh, some ideas around uh, warming up to you. You can really customize your own warm up, but I think if you keep in mind what you're accomplishing, um, you can figure it out. Right? I'll give you some that you can work with. Um, but basically, you, I think always good to start with just some breath. Just get yourself started, you know, just you know, a couple of, of nice deep breaths. And to really um, get in front of a mirror, because as I talked about, you, you might be surprised if you take some deep breaths and realize, wow, look how much everything in me is rising up. And instead, we want to see as you take your breath, um, as I take a deep breath, 
I got a really big breath just there, right? But you didn't see any activity happening here, right? And um, so practicing that, getting that down, let, resetting that button. You've got to, you know, neural pathways are an f- amazing thing. It's why, you know, the, all the um, spirituality of, of, of doing the, uh, the exercises and, the, um, you know, are so powerful because your body then begins to know where to go. Your, your soul knows how to get where you need to go because you've practiced a, a beautiful, healthy way of getting there. And so then when you, when you come against really hard, you know, nerve wracking positions, there's a, there's a, there's a, a well-worn path to get to that place of peace. And I, th- I think of that in, you know, re- that reset budding, learning, learning how to breathe, really letting that become, at first it's going to maybe feel a little unnatural. And you're like, oh my gosh, I'll learn how to breathe. But eventually the more you do it, um, separate from your performance, it'll start sneaking in to your performance or your worship leading, right? If you're doing the work separately. And that's what I'd say about all of these kinds of things. Um, so, um, so warm up. It's gonna um, by nature. Let's think about how the chords. I told you to. They're they're um, sitting more in this position most of the time as you're where your speaking voice is, and so we're going to be asking them to get to a place that they're not going often, and so they're going to have to stretch out and come back and stretch out a little bit more and come back. So, so the overall trajectory of a warm up is going to be low to high. Okay, so that's just a good thing to think about. You're not going to, I got to warm my voice up. You're not going to start there, right? You're going to ease into that space, right? And, um, and then keep revisiting low because we don't want to pull the roots out of the ground, right? We're looking for that beautiful, long range of motion. So really nice. After you do some breaths, one thing you can do around the breath is just a, just a hiss. A hiss is not activating vocal cords at all. So after you get a really nice deep breath, I would encourage you to kind of take the deep breath in, hold it for a second, and then from that space in your diaphragm, you're going to, that's your, kind of your push off place. Um, you're not crunching your abs. Everybody, you know, you know, something has to be happening in this area down here. And so it's like, I must have to do a crunch. No, in fact, it's kind of the opposite. It's more of a, an outward, you know, if anything, you're letting your stomach go. <laughs> um, it's not great news for some of us, but we are going to just, we're going to, you know, we're going to let it just kind of outward. Okay. That's, that's more what's happening. And it's this wonderful lower movement, even as, as the pitch goes higher. Right. So, um, so we'll, we'll start with just some hissing, which is a deep breath, hold it for a second and then just hiss. So I'm just imagining this collective sound going out all over, um, all over the world. Um, and so you, you want you want that hiss to be um, consistent. You don't want you'll you'll notice. You might start to notice. Wow, I'm kind of spurty, or I'm kind of like it's ir- irregular. Well, that's oh, okay. That's some good information. So you you really want to you and you can time it and and just kind of try to get that longer and longer. Um, and that's a great exercise for sort of activating the diaphragm, a great starting point. You can move to buzzing. It's kind of like a dental drill. You know, it's more, it's, it's kind of bouncy. It's not an S, it's a Z, right? So you get that real vibration inside your, um, inside your mouth. And you just are going to, um, there's no script here. You're just going to, again... Your basic trajectory is kind of low to high, revisiting back down. I kind of tell my clients, imagine a bee, you know, moving around and you're just going to, you know, just follow it. In the beginning, you might just be like, just up and down. But then as you get kind of familiar with it, you can kind of, now I want you to notice I'm not um, using momentum. Here's what momentum would sound like. So I have this spurt of control and then I'm just letting it go away, right? That is counterproductive Mm -hmm. to what we're trying to accomplish here. So you want a nice, even, you know, it's like lifting a weight, you know, doing um, curls, you, you know, just because of the weight, you've got to, you've got to activate your muscle to bring it up. Right. And you can even use a little momentum and really bring it up like that and bring other recruit, other muscles and get up there a couple different ways, but you're going to have to use some muscle, right? When you let it down, you have you have the option of just letting the weight of that that weight that's in your hand just dropping down, right? And then 
you know, you're going to overshoot, you know, but if you, if you just make it work in both directions, up and down evenly, that's how I want you to think about a lot of these exercises, that there's an equal amount of, of activation in the descent, because almost always that descent is where we get into trouble, right? We're kind of like, shoo, I made it. Now I'm home free. I'm coasting down the hill. So Diane, when I lead worship with you or we sing together at church over these past 10, 15 years, you're, I hear you doing things. You're making <laughs> sounds that are yeah. not the song. Exactly. What are some, can you just do some of that? Like, what are some of those sounds that I'm hearing you just Well, the most, do? you know, the one that everybody, you know, any chorus that you've been in and, you know, any, uh, vocal coach classically or otherwise you're going to use lip trills or motorboats people call them different things and it's because it's such an effective exercise it takes the pressure off of your cords and the only way to maintain it is to have compression with your diaphragm right so here's so so start by just working on that motorboat and you want to kind of listen that you have a lot of sound not a lot of air right if you've got a kind of a thing you're not really compressing well and you're not going to be able to sustain it but, it, but if you notice, I'll just do a five note scale. I'm starting on an A below middle C. And I'll just go. Lots of sound. You're not hearing a lot of air. It's very clean, right? And then that is a great exercise to get you to, to um, activate your diaphragm. Because if you start stringing those together, as many as you can, a lot of t- times here, what I, here's what I'll hear. Right, I can't get into work. Well, that's because you're not activating your diaphragm. Okay, so we so learning to do that. So so I get I get my clients to start um, stringing couples together because interestingly, if I put two together, they can almost many of them can all, can get back up the mountain because they've already know they got to have enough. But then they'll let go at the next next peak, right? And then the same thing with the third. So um, so we want. <laughs> You go on and on and on, and you notice there's no tension in what I'm doing. I'm not, I'm, I'm not getting louder as I go up. That's a telltale sign when you're doing these warm ups. Are you getting louder every time you go up? Is that the way you have told your body that you have to make higher notes? You've got to get louder. And a lot of you know that, you, you, that, that you've had that experience, and you don't have to, but you got to retrain to that. So then the other thing, then I would just like extend it to maybe a, a five note and then a, a nine note scale. And all, all I mean by that is going the full eight octave and then up to the, the one note beyond. So it's like this. And I snap because a lot of having it in a rhythm is going to make you a better singer. Most people, if they don't do it, it's going to be like, and you'll see the parts where they're feeling uncomfortable because they're going to speed up in the place they're uncomfortable. So if you give yourself something measurable, you're going to get real work done. And I, you know, I see people getting ready um, to sing and I'll just, I, I'll hear a lot of, um, you know, like, you know, and again, I feel like that sort of just, that's going for that thing that we, Sarah and I were talking about, you know, the, so, so again, if you can just kind of keep that nice and, even now, another then, then to take that to the next step would be to do your motorboat and then connect it to an ah without a breath in between. And what I would like you to do when you're doing that is think about what your diaphragm is doing to sustain this motorboat. And once we take away the, the burbling of the lips, which makes it a semi occluded exercise, very helpful for, for, for vocal therapy, anybody that are having issues. Anytime you can do something that is a semi-occluded exercise, you can look those up on, um, on uh, YouTube and, and find those kinds of exercises. They're really good therapy because it's hard to be super tense when you're doing semi-occluded stuff. Um, but again, mindfulness as you're doing this, the, the handoff from the end of my motorboat into the ah is where I'm going to really think about maintaining that support that I have because suddenly you've got that openness. So the air has more you know, it, it, it's going to feel different, but you want to hold on and learn to hold on to that, um, that support. I hope that makes sense. So I'm going to do that for you. Okay. So we're going to go. Okay. 
right? So tendency is to make all those things different. I want you to begin to find how things relate to each other as you're doing vocal exercises. So they build on each other. It's not like, um, cause a lot of times what will happen is yeah, everything kind of changes. The, it, you've got this beautiful, your, your air is moving forward. So you've already got resonance kind of coming forward. And if you can keep that same trajectory of air, as you open up, you know, you can, you, you might find some different experiences with your, um, with your resonance. So yeah. those would be some really great ones. You want to move and just keep getting higher. And I want to just give you a, a, a little app. I think that um, Matt's going to put it up there. It's called Singer's Friend is this, this app that I, a lot of you um, are instrumentalists, but a lot of you vocalists don't play an instrument. Um, and so the thought of doing scales or things like that, not knowing how to do that can be, feel a little daunting, but this, um, this app singer's friend, I'll just pull it up and show you real quick. Um, what I love about it is it's the paid version. I like it a little bit better. Um, if, I don't know if you can see it, but you have a place where you can pick your scale. Well, first of all, you pick your range. So I've got an alto range, right? And then, um, it has all the different baritone. So I pick my alto range. I'm good. And then I get to pick the scale. So we're doing the five tone scale right now. So I would just pick five tone and it's going to start pretty low. I'll start the C below uh, middle C for the altos, which might be a little bit low for some of you. You don't have to do every note. You just, you come, you can come and go if you need to, you can change an octave. Do you want to stretch yourself? You want to try to get into the, uh, the wild edges a little bit where it doesn't sound as great. Because the human voice, what will happen then, your sweet spot, your green grass is going to, that patch is going to grow, right? So it's okay that the edges are not feeling really pretty or anything like that. But do work your, play, your voice into those places, which can be hard for perfectionists when they don't like how their voices, they stop, right? Let's go a little beyond. I don't want you pushing, hurting, heart, you know, that kind of thing. But then um, there's lots of really great scales on there. There's um, uh, octaves arpeggios fantastic you can and and you can use all different vowel sounds i encourage you to do that you know ah eh i oh ooh and you know and those kinds of things and 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 working through cuz cuz all of our sounds ride on vowels right every you, you can't you know other than like a a v, a v or an m you can kind of sustain but but most consonants they're pretty much done right and so i like to say at the end of a of a, of a word um you want to kiss it with the consonant on the end you don't want to kind of be folding down to it you know let it let it come on the very end and, and do most of the work on the on the vowel sound um Let's see. Let's do just like an octave arpeggio, just to give you an idea of what happens here. Then you also have a, a speed, um, which I really love. And, and slow is a great place to start. Slower is a great place to start because you can really make sure that you're being mindful about all these things that we're talking about. And then faster is more what, what I would use that for when I'm trying to get some good fine motor and just, you know, uh, doing um, the flexibility and things like that. So just think about the different stuff. But so if I hit this one, you hear it? Right? So I could motorboat it. Or I could do a ha, 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 ha. Or ma, 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 ma. I mean, a million things you can do on it. And that's what I like about this app. It's just the piano. So, you, you know, it's not like, okay, now we're going to do these. So you can, you can use the same one over and over and just, um, just keep warming up on different places, get a little bit more um, volume, you know, kind of work up into that sort of mixy place. That's great. Yeah. That's super helpful. Um, oh my gosh. So Matt, you got, uh, we, we've got us a, a, vict- a victim or a, sorry. A, yes. Okay. Um, we're going to go live with Dan Pierce and just Dan a Pierce. But we actually got a couple of questions okay. about warm up specifically that I think will be really easy for you or quick hitters. Um, first, what's the ideal time frame before you need to be ready yes. to sing Thank to you. begin warm up? And then how long does that warm up last? So if you have a gap between doing warm up and singing <sighs> for your voice to cool back down. Right. Can you talk about that? Excellent. Thank you. I'm so glad. Um, so typically, um, 17 to 20 minutes is, a, is, is 
is, is a good warm up, right? Um, as worship leaders, because we're singing in the morning, we can kind of get the front end of our warm up sort of done. And then as we're kind of noodling around and getting ready, sort of do the tail end of that, just being really careful. Maybe just hum through your songs in a high, a high, you know, light hum or, or use vowels through your songs and you can kind of continue the warm up. But, but you want about 20 minutes and you really want it as close to your performance as possible. You don't want a, a much time to pass. And so if you do your whole thing, like, like we get done and we've still got, you know, 45 minutes or so sometimes in between. So I'll just keep my chords vibrating on my own, you know, I'll just, and motorboats are kind of the, get, are a great one to just get it done. Just kind of keep things maybe humming under your breath or an NG sound, like on the end of the word sing. Mm, it's kind of ba- bounces right here. It takes a lot of the, the pressure off your chords and you can just, Mm-hmm. And do slides and things like that. And, um, you know, do slides are wonderful. So just, I wouldn't go hard, but just keep it yeah. moving. Right. And then as soon as you're done, it's really when the cool down should start. That's when it's going to be effective. Mm-hmm. If you wait, it's not effective anymore. Mm-hmm. And that's basically, you just think the opposite trajectory, you're moving down. You do a lot of the same things, you know, Ooh, ah, overall tra- trajectory is down now, right? And eventually I'm going to move to his size, like, ah, oh, that kind of thing, right? So just uh, think trajectory. And that, did, that answer, did that answer those yeah, questions? Okay. That's great. That's great. All right, here we go. We're going to add Dan, see if we can get a couple masterclass folks, and then we'll... Uh, We'll wrap this thing up. Dan, are you ready to go? Sure. Let's do it. Uh, Yeah, see if you can make Dan a co-panelist. Dan Pierce. Hello, Dan Pierce. Can you unmute yourself? There you are. Go ahead and click your microphone as well. There's another microphone that you... Yep. Hi, Dan. Where are you from, Dan? I'm from just outside of Philly. Oh, cool. Hi, Sarah. How are you? I'm good, Dan. How are you? Nice to see your face. Yeah, good to see you, too. Well, is there a particular issue that you wanted to address? Um, I think, like, just the issue of, like, still having my voice last, like, through (laughs) a long period of singing. Yeah. Um, I have had some... uh, singing lessons but it was a long time ago and i probably have learned back some bad habits yeah i suspect um i've tried to sing along with the mama jane work warm-up thing but i don't know if that's I can intense hang it pretty fast yeah that's great i i will tell you that was um created a little inside information that was created for usher um back in the day when she she he needed something and so she put that together to start and it, it's a pretty advanced warm up. Um, and so, yeah, I wouldn't want you just to try to keep up with it, right. Just maybe dip in, you can use it and maybe just, you know, just here and be in lighter, but it is a pretty intense, yeah. an intense workout. Um, so you probably need to customize and find something a little bit easier for, um, that's going to be effective for you because, um, once sometimes people over warm, you know, then, then you, we've really uh, already gotten to a place of almost fatigue before we even start. Um, yeah. is, is there a place in your voice particularly that you feel that you notice it's harder? Or I mean, the top of the range is harder. Um, okay. Also, I think the other thing that's happening is I have a lot of post-nasal drip, and I think that sure. that probably gets the vibrations yeah. going in the wrong direction with the vocal cords. Right, right. Um, Let's do, uh, if we can, we're just going to do a real simple exercise just to um, kind of like a little bit of a, a reset bun- button, you know, mm-hmm. and you will probably have warmed up a little bit more by now, typically when you do this, but mm-hmm. we're just going to do a five note slide and you're just going to um, use the syllable ma. Okay. So first I want you to sit up straighter. Okay. All my guitar players like to, you know, have just, I have a lot of guitar players. I'll have them literally put their back against the wall and kind of slide down the wall a bit slightly, bend their knees Maybe just I to kind of stand up. I, stand up? Feel. I think that's great. That'd be great. <laughs> yes. Yes. So um, we're going to kind of do this quickly, but um, I want you just to take this syllable 
And built into it is a nice position of the jaw, nice and long. So we're always going to try to think more this direction with our mouth as opposed to this direction. When we pull this way, you know, and it's amazing how people can take vowels and turn them into like, like, like an E. But we're going to just go, ma. It's low for me. I'm going to do an octave up to start. Okay. Ma. It's slow, it's relaxed, right? But you're gonna start down here. Okay, let's just give that a try. Okay, did you notice as you're watching your stuff, did you see what your head, um, how your head was following the pitch? <laughs> All right. So that's so common. I mean, honestly, 90, 90% is one of the first things that we start working at. Okay. So in your brain, somehow you've decided that that's how that pitch is moving. But you know now <laughs> that the pitch is going you know, it's going this way, right? So I want you to just kind of take your hands like this. And as you go, like it's going out like this. So, well, I want you to imagine, well, it's a horizontal movement, but, but what I want you to do is kind of, we're going to interrupt that cycle and you're just going to go, um, start a little lower than this, but you'd be like, ma. So I want you to try to keep the head, you know, in this position. You, you're looking at yourself right now, right? So I want you to, to look at yourself. Y'all get in front of a mirror. You don't have, most of us don't know this is happening. And look, what Sarah's doing right now is great, where she's got her, her finger right here in her chin is such a good, um, a good thing to do. I, I know I've got like all these different things, uh, but, but, the, um, but that is great because the chin can also do the same thing. Feel like it's got to get involved, like, and you want it just to kind of get out of the way. Right. So we're going to try this and see how this works. You want to keep your head. The position is right now. Right. Okay. So not this, right. More just, just this, right. There you go. Right. That's the back of your throat. It's going to be at the most optimal position right there. And you're going to put your hands like this, and then you're going to bring them down as the pitch goes up. So you want me to actually do that with my hands? Yes. Okay. So here we go. You're going to help me do it. I, I forgot the... Uh, oh, that's okay. Uh, yeah. yeah. So it's... Ma- okay. Ma- Good. Let's try the next one. Ma- Great. And I want you to... And as each place that you are, I want you to be where you are. So not, not like... Ma- you know, establish the note, right? Ma. Okay. Ma. Now, did you hear how that's opening up a little bit more? It's starting to feel a little more stable. Yeah, I stayed there longer this time. Yeah, and and so partly we leave before we ever get the work done, and then we our brain is thinking, be away, you know, be afraid of this place, don't go there. Okay. <laughs> One thing I want to speak is also I'm kind of noticing that that you're tending in the lower notes, you're you're positioning your larynx a little low. You're kind of like you're you it it's. I want you to just go say in in a deep voice, just hi. Just say your name. Hi, Dan. Yeah. Okay. So when you're down there, it, you, you still have resonance, right? But, but as you go to sing, all of a sudden you feel like you've got to drop your larynx and okay. you don't, right? So, so I want you to go, for, I want you to go, hey. Hey. Now I want you to sing the ma. Here we go. In that same place. Ma. Okay, give me a um, I'm going to bring this pitch up a little bit. Um, so, um, yeah, ma, say ma. Ma. Yes, and just, just let that larynx, this is the, you know, oh, uh, that larynx. Um, we want it just in a really neutral, kind of relaxed position. So let's try it right here. Ma. Okay. Yeah. So this is good. I would love to work with, I'd love to work with you on this because I think you're adding some larynx movement that will, um, you will love when you kind of lose that, um, to exaggerate the sound. This is absolute exaggeration. Okay. Just so you can kind of hear is, is what's happening. It's the, 
Mo. You're activating larynx. Oh, a little guy there. Um, you're activating your larynx, and you don't need to. We want the cords just to just to move. Um, and I don't know if that makes sense. I want to try to um, let the sound kind of come out without moving the actual. Yes. Yeah, so, so let's quick try something. I want you to go. Hey. Hey. Nope. Hey. Hey. There you go. And then you go, hey. Hey. Now, did you hear that down? That note was so different from where we just were. Hey. It was very conversational, right? right. But, but because it sounded low, you were feeling like you had to sing down to it. So let's do that again. Hey. Hey. Nice. Hey. Hey. There, that's that beautiful part of your voice I wanted to hear, and I heard it. Did you hear the difference of that? Yeah. Now take that bottom note. Hey, where you just were. Hey. Yes, and I want you to go ma. Ma. There it is. Now give me ma. Ma. Okay, we went a little folded back there on the top, but that was much better. So just experimenting with that sort of hey, speaky part of your voice can really make things easier for you. Cool. Really pretty instrument. When I heard that space right in there, when you got that, came down to that, like, oh, there he is. Uh, really nice. Yeah, that, so, that's great. Yeah. That's great, Dan. Yeah, I know it's, it's criminal to kind of <laughs> stop or to move I on because you feel like you could you could spend forever and this is why you do want to make the investment i mean like 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 we've been saying to have a vocal coach for one or two or 10 or five lessons you know yeah. you could just you you know that this would be so beneficial and these are the kind of things we just want to model some of this so um we're going to do uh dan thank you so much for Thanks, uh, dan. Thank you so much. being on there you're welcome man, are you you. available <laughs> uh, yes, um, I think I, <laughs> I probably am. Y'all could uh, contact our studio. We have yeah. several coaches, and we're doing online stuff. So yeah, but yeah, we're gonna have a. We have time, we'll have okay. uh, in the follow up email. You'll see a recording of this, uh, of this whole deal, and you'll have links to a bunch of different things from, from this. So we're maybe we'll do one more bonus uh, uh, master class after an official end. So why don't we, uh, Diane, if you would just pray for us yeah. and kind of have an official end, and then we'll bring on maybe a female voice, Matt. And if whoever wants to stay on can hang out and then we'll have kind of a second. Yeah. Unfortunately I have a client in a little while. <laughs> oh, you've got, I, you got otherwise, otherwise, I mean, I can, I, can yeah, do another, so, I can do one more, but I love this. I mean, I wish I would stay here all day and do this, but and yeah, I'm so, okay to stay on for a little bit. That would be great. So yeah, if you could just kind of conclude and, and pray for us and yeah. then we'll, we'll throw on one, one or two more and, and kind of have a slow off ramp, but um, just so thankful for you. Thank you for your voice, Sarah. Thank you for uh, your heart and just sharing part of your story. Um, this is uh, this is an incredible day, incredible hour. And thank you attendees for, uh, for being a part and just uh, taking notes and asking great questions. And yeah. this is, we've only scratched the surface. Yeah. I mean, we could do seven or it's 10 like more of these. Um, but, but just the fact that we've begun the conversation really the fact that you've you've sat through it and watched it is yes. is really important so diane Thank just you. bless us and, and pray for us i do i bless you all in the name of jesus with the um freedom in your voice um lord for the things that are in the way of um my brothers and sisters from uh, to achieving the things they want to do vocally, the things they want to say, the beautiful words they want to communicate, the invitational way they want to sing. Um, Lord, I pray for freedom for each of them to fully embrace who they are, their unique sound that doesn't sound like anyone else. Lord, I pray, Father, for um, just the just the extra that everyone needs right now as they're... Um, ministering in an entirely new way. And I pray that, that, um, you know, that the church always responds when things are kind of compressed and we're, we, so much beauty and creativity can come from this time, Lord. So I just speak creativity over all of my friends, Lord. And I, I speak, um, life and Lord, that you would help each of us to be fully, um, present to this season 
that we will talk about for our whole lifetime, that we would use this, Lord, that we would be so present to it. And um, as we talked about, we would learn to, to hear the prompting of your Holy Spirit um, so that we'll be even more effective when we are with folks or we'll be listening in a whole different way. We won't be reliant on body language to know what you're doing, God. We will be relying on your Holy Spirit. Bless my brothers and sisters, God, with your peace, with your love, with your presence. Pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So good. Uh, Diane, you probably got a four o'clock, right? Is that um, bounce? I'm going to text him and ask if we can move it to four. I think he'll be great. He was oh, pretty. <laughs> you, you are. <laughs> As you go. are. Uh, no, I'm not, but I'm not, we can work this out. Um, uh, so Matt, yeah, uh, dial us in uh, the, the right, next uh, Suzanne is. class here. Suzanne is coming live. Suzanne. Dan. Suzanne. And Sarah, if you have some things too, please speak up. You have so much experience. Well, I'm just excited about Suzanne. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. It's so nice to see you. Good to see you. I have matching uh, apparel oh. here. This is very, very uh, much of a blessing to me to oh, get a little good. input from people. I'm very uh, thankful for the opportunity Yay. that uh, we could sneak in another one or two. Yeah. Well, what can we do for you? How can we help you? Well, um, I have had vocal training on and off, and my current concern is like trying to really – figure out that middle voice or what you call the mixed voice. Yeah. And I think I have it, but I wonder if maybe I'm pushing too hard because I, uh, for Zoom church, my husband and I were singing together. We were using microphones and stuff and we did all the appropriate audio adjustments for Zoom, mm -hmm. right? And I noticed that when I was singing back up to him, I thought I sounded a little better than when I felt like I was leading. And I okay. think because I might be pushing or something. I'm making a quick di diagram because <laughs> this has been helpful to some of my clients about that sort of mix area. Okay. Yeah. So this is terrible. This won't make any sense daily. Okay. So I think of the, the mix area and this is really just my imagination of it. Okay. This is not scientific, Okay. but I think one of the problems is that people think of that, um, that place that you're talking about as a single place as just one Oh. sort of position, right? Yeah. And um, and what happens, let's say we're moving from like the chest, let's say the chest voice is here and the head voice is here, uh -huh. right? Like, let's think of all this as that sort of bridging place. When you first wow. are leaving that place, you still, it's going to still feel a whole lot like chest. Look how much is still in yeah. here. And that head voice is starting to sneak in a little bit, right? Um, mm. And this line is sort of riding kind of in that sort of for all that sort of nasally space, right? So one thing that can tend to happen is people just think of it as like just this one little box as my way to get through to the other. And it can kind of be helpful. So is there a particular song that you were working on that has that space in it for you? A particular song. Well, we were, uh, what did we sing last Sunday? Uh, we're fine. No, not that one. I will, uh, you are worthy of my praise. How about that one? Okay. What, uh, in D. D. So, um, give me a little bit of a, I, I don't know if there's so many, you are worthy. I'll give you all my. Oh, okay. Oh, I hope of that. You can tell her. Yeah. Right? <laughs> no, no, no. I just know that song. I haven't, oh. I haven't done that in forever. I'm like, oh, oh yeah. I need to add that in. So it's, yeah, man. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So let me tell you what, that sits on that A. Right, so that is the that is the space. That's why you're having issues it's with that. Yes, yeah. so so you want to do some work, kind of widening that space for you, and doing some exercise. So let's do exactly what we just did with. Let's just kind of keep it um, with like what we did with Dan. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna sneak in to that A, and we're gonna go a little bit lower first. Okay, so I'm gonna start down here. We aren't there, so I want you to make sure you think chest voice right now. Okay? okay. You're not even thinking about that note that's coming. That's a lot of times what happens, right? Uh -huh. Oh my gosh, the A is coming. Oh, the chorus is almost here. So you're already yeah. shifting how you're singing. You're already not fully present in your chest voice. Yeah. So if we're trying to get, you know, kind of 
on a gradient, you're already moving toward the gradient when you're not even, you're still in your chest. Does yeah. that make sense? Right? So if you're like, um, sort of, kind of, it makes more sense as we do it. But. Okay. So this, I want you just to know that this is all your chest voice right now. Okay. Okay. So you're going to go, ma. Ma. Okay, slow down. I don't yeah, want to be present. <laughs> yeah, of course you are. Yeah, I would be too. I mean, but but so you just want to ma. You're gonna take the scenic route. You're gonna okay. feel all that place in between. Try it again. Ma. Great. Great. Now let's try opening your mouth a little bit more. Okay. Ma and put your finger like what Sarah was doing that. Just ma. Okay. Okay. Ma. <laughs> kind of hard to remind myself. It is, yeah. And so also, if you can kind of bring your head position a little this way, right? Okay. So you're, you're kind of, and, and notice almost already our two examples, and we will probably see this if we did this all day. Everybody's kind of already starts in this place, right? Okay. And we want to start more like this, okay? So, okay. so kind of on your head on its axis. So let's um, let's try. Ma- Here we go. Open up. Good, 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 good. It sounds like I'm an opera singer. <laughs> I get scared of my own voice. Okay. What you said, that's what, what? that is so common. You know, we get scared, right? So it feels, loud. yeah. So it feels loud to you? Well, it's like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I guess that's a good thing, right? Absolutely, it's a good thing. Um, let's, let's just kind of sneak up a little bit so we can make sure we, we get into that space that we're talking about, okay? So uh, so as we go up, just imagine that, I don't want you to think of the sound as it of it narrowing. I want you to just kind of think of it like a column. Okay, get that mouth open. Ma. feel a little more stable yeah <laughs> <laughs> okay so still i want you to try to bring that head position a little bit forward we're still doing a little bit of this okay now we're gonna do so so you could drop drop the chin kind of forward you're not quite tight so that's yeah there you go there we go okay. so ma, and here we go ma. Good. Now, if we were together, we would just be, you know, we would kind of stay there for a minute, just find some stability around that space. But, but that's that note, by the way. So that's the surprise, right? It's like, oh, I can do that. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. So part of it is just having information. Right. So okay. if you know that notes it, then then trying to do sneak up into that place, try it out of context. Maybe, maybe take na 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 na. Take the words out completely. Get yeah. that nice na, which is gonna help you, you know, get into there. In fact, why don't you try that for me? You, you, na, you, you, na. Yes, yes, yes. I'm sorry, I was talking about na, na. Mm. Na, 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 na. Yes. Is that helpful a little bit? Yeah. Opening Thank that up. you. And I will add too that I know that at least my experience of you as well is that you are killer with harmonies. So you sing a lot with somebody else. And right? Yes. And I think <laughs> there is, um, I know that when I went from singing a lot of BGVs to singing um, alone, there is like a sonic satisfaction and comfort with singing harmonies with somebody that you don't get that sort of sonic pleasure from singing alone. And I think that it can 
um, sort of affect how you feel about how you sound. So I think that just kind of going into it, knowing that as you're transitioning to like singing more solo, um, it, or not that you haven't, you have before, but just adjusting sort of your expectations of what it might feel like, you know, at least that's my experience. Of it. That is great. That is so dead on. Absolutely. And it's probably yeah. why you're a great background vocalist because you're used to pressing your voice into others. Right. Mm-hmm. And when yes. you don't have that, it's like, Oh, I'm not here all by myself. So, yeah. so yeah. making big noises is going to be an important part of you, you know, like taking that note, Hey, like, and doing stuff like that to try to just get used to getting that sound out. Okay. Awesome. Thank, Thank you, you so much. You're Thank you, Suzanne. Appreciate you. Thank you. Hey, Di. Bye. Thank you for uh, for helping us. Absolutely. Uh, I think Sarah's gonna Sarah is gonna hang on and take one or two more. Great. So, but you're re- you're relieved. Thank you so mm-hmm. much for. Ah, it was so wonderful being with you. Now I want. I wish I could just sit and. <laughs> Read all the comments. It's going to kill me. But I'll, well, we'll have they'll they'll be in the recording. You sh- the I recording should have the okay. the comments and stuff on there. So we still got about seventy five people on the call. So okay, great. Um, well, God bless you guys. Yeah, God bless you. Okay, thank you so you. much. Take care. Appreciate you. Okay. Bye-bye. So, so uh, Sarah will be back in a second. Um, so Matt, go ahead and line up our next. Uh, we'll take two more, and. Uh, Go for it. Uh, hey, Sarah, what up? What's happening? I'm out of breath. We still got 70 people on this call. You guys are troopers. Zoom Whoa. brain. Zoom brain. Everybody type what number Zoom call this is for you today. <laughs> do, do, do. So Zoom I think we brain. will go live with... I'm not sure if it's, well, it looks like it's Lorian Kanoi, not Donnie. Um, cool. So I'm working on that. But Lorian, uh, are you ready to go live? I have not chatted with you before this very moment, so I don't want to take you by surprise. Um, you'll have to activate your video once you are Yay. ready. But if you're ready, go ahead and activate your video and unmute your audio and join us. Hey. Hi. Hi, you guys. Good to see you. Good to see you guys. What's up, Donnie? You said hi to you, Donnie. You didn't show your face. I'm hiding. It's it's all about you. (laughs) All right. So what are we going to do? You want me to... my problems <laughs> <laughs> Sarah you're the boss oh did we lose you did we lose Sarah's audio Matt hello oh, yeah, I've been with the connection she's frozen too oh okay I think you're back am I back I think you're back yeah I'm sorry I don't know it hasn't done this at all and now it's doing it <laughs> oh no there you are hello yeah you're yeah, back for you you guys are all frozen i don't know why Uh-oh. this is huh. too much netflix downstairs <laughs> <laughs> she's frozen again this is the stillest master class ever <laughs> <laughs> Well, why don't you share a little bit about uh, what's going on or just uh, similar to Diane, just kind of what's what's happening with your voice? Well, I did. I started taking voice lessons when I was about 12 and went to college for vocal performance. But it's been a really long time. (laughs) Wow. And so I'm sure that I've developed some bad habits. I tend to carry a lot of tension in my jaw. So that's something I'm very aware of. Um, Also with having to do recordings, I'm sitting and singing a lot more and I'm finding that's cutting off my breathing. So just trying to figure out how do I get better breath control 
particularly in a sitting position a lot of the time right now and uh, and just learning to relax and also that breaking point gets me gets me a lot of the time as well yeah. so any of that would be great yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah absolutely Sarah, hey Sarah what's up good to see you again you're back you're back <laughs> you're, you're well, muted mute you Oh, there you are. thank you. There you go. We're good. My um, internet was being a little wonky, so I have to switch to my phone so I can use my data. Sorry about that. Where were we? It's all, all good. good. It, yeah, we're just talking about some of the issues with tension and sitting down and singing in the live stream world, sitting versus standing, and how it's adding some uh, just some things you don't like. Now, is this coming from you watching your recording? Like, are you watching it and going? Oh, yeah, I'm critiquing myself a lot. And, <laughs> um, so, yeah, that's not been easy on me, but it's been good. Um, and has actually boosted my confidence some because when you're not seeing yourself on screen at all, you don't really know how you're doing. And sure, um, I've been happy with some of it, so that's good. Um, are you? Do you play? Definitely get in the way more. I are would. you singing with an instrument, or are you just? I am not. I do not play an instrument. Okay. I only sing, and then Donnie sings and plays with me. Yeah, on and Donnie's right there with the guitar, ready to go. Yeah. Okay. Let it. Yeah. Get sing. A, I guess what? Sing a chorus or a, sing something. Good luck. Right <laughs> oh, I guess Donnie will grab grab his guitar right now if you want. And yeah. Great. I'm going to invite you to, um, what kind of chair are you sitting in? I'm sitting in an office chair, and I am sitting on the edge of the chair. Right okay. Now, and, um, right too, right? <laughs> yes, totally. Right at the edge of the chair with, I'm assuming you're already doing this, but it's helpful for me to go through too, with um, your heels and your feet flat on the ground. Okay. So I, I too am sitting in a chair and then I like to roll my shoulders back so that it's really from like the butt up. It's like I'm standing. So I have to put more of an emphasis on like sticking my collarbone out a bit and making sure that my head is not doing this, but in this space. And really that aligns your body as if you were standing. Okay. So I don't know if that feels better to sort of roll your shoulders back and see all right. Great. I'll try to stay there and not hunch over. My I know. I kind of end up leaning forward when I'm singing. Right. And, you know, I like what Diane said about how um, when we're in the midst of it, like, don't even think about it. Um, for me, I like to maybe take one song in the set where I say, I'm going to put a little bit more focus into my technique and then allow myself to not think about it at all for the rest. Um but, you know, if you write little notes on the top of your paper, it can help reset you in the moments where you're looking at the words anyway, you know. That's one of my little tricks. Got it. Is All right, Donnie ready to rock? Donnie. I think he's ready. We just have to decide on a song. <laughs> <laughs> you can change. What's happening? That's amazing. <laughs> wow. yeah maybe just sing uh sing a a couple lines of a chorus it doesn't have to be a lot but i think it'd be great just to hear a little bit um well we could do the same song but sure the, um i will worship you're gonna sing the army well i don't usually sing lead on that one huh Maybe Why don't we you do like uh, we could do generous God. Great, that? that's perfect. Yeah. And you want the chorus on that? Whichever one you feel yeah, like whatever. best represents what you want to do. Probably the chorus would be good to work on because it's higher. Um, so. So I'll just lose some 
just some, um, I lose my stability in there on those higher notes. So, yeah, well, it sounds great. Um, I would like you to do it again and really focus on uh, just taking the deep breath after each of those lines. So put your hand on your belly button is normally where I like to do it to make sure that I'm breathing into here instead of here. So, um, uh, yeah, if you just want to start that again and you can even do a nice, you do exceedingly so much more, but plan that in there. Let's try that again. You do exceedingly so much more than we could ask, believe, or imagine. For you are generous with your lavish love, pour it out on us, unending. That was better. That was way better. <laughs> Well, I just like, that was better. I know that was better. Saying. Like <laughs> stopping to think about breathing would be a good thing. <laughs> well, you know, I think that um, one of the things that really is helpful for me is that I like to look at a song and put a slash in for where I'm going to breathe so that as I'm practicing it, the breath isn't something that is an afterthought. It's really something that we are strategic about and it's an actual part of the song. Like, in school, we would talk about the rests being just as po as important as the played notes, but a thing that we don't have in the way that we do music, our Nashville numbers or our chord systems, we don't see a visual representation of the rest. So we have to sort of notate that for ourselves to make sure that we make space to breathe. Like that was a huge difference, at least for me listening. Your pitch was so consistent. Um, I'd like to try one more thing. Is that all right, Mike and Matt? Yeah. And Lorian, if oh. you're watching, oh. <laughs> I, should, I should have asked you first. Um, all right, so can you speak it to me? Uh, we're going to slow it down, and I want you to pay extra attention to sort of this buzzy space right here. Will you just speak the words to me? The words to the chorus? Mm hmm. Okay just in my regular speech. sort of what you just said there regular okay. it's a little more mm. you do exceedingly so much more than we could ask believe or imagine good or you so are gonna have... mm -hmm. go ahead i forgot no i forgot there was more keep going oh okay <laughs> uh what, how does it go now <laughs> for you are generous with your lavish love Pour it out on us, an ending. Great. Can you now, I'm going to ask you to add two things. So you're going to do the breath where we did it. And I want you to focus a little more on sort of bringing that sound up to the front of your mouth, similar to what we saw with Dan, where mm -hmm. instead of it maybe heading back here, it just sits a little bit more in the front, but it shouldn't hurt. So if you feel any pain, just stop and we'll reset. Okay. Wait, I wasn't ready. I forgot to breathe. <laughs> <laughs> okay, he's counting me off. <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> and yeah, if you take a nice deep breath on his three, four, you'll be great. One, two, three. You'll do exceedingly so much more than we could ask, believe, or am I? So I think the big um, space for you, something that you could adjust right away is just planning your breaths because that made such a huge difference just giving you all of that support that you need to get it get through that chorus, which is kind of a beast of a chorus, honestly, in terms of keeping the intensity up and having the pitch stay good. So I thought that sounded great. Okay. Now you're putting your, your finger here. Can you explain a little bit more about what what you're asking for there. Yeah. So I'm sorry. I have all these physical things that I do when I'm usually working with my students that 
yeah. you have no idea what I mean when I'm doing this right there. <laughs> um, but so the difference in terms of like the resonant space of where we can feel the vibration, you know how she said, we can feel vibration up here in our head voice and here in our trust voice, right? I think that sometimes it's helpful for me when we want something to sound more speech level. So it, it isn't super far back and round like you hear in choral singing, uh, which is a, can be an okay spot in terms of blending in that sort of setting. But um, if you are doing a hum or a lip trill of or mm, you can feel a buzz here in the front of your lip. And so sometimes it's helpful, like the difference between um, you do exceedingly so much more than we versus you do exceedingly so much more than we did you kind of hear the difference? Yeah, I can definitely of, hear that. Like the back sort of lifted palate versus the buzzing here in the front. And really the warm ups with the lip trills, which can be hard to get, but even mm, will help sort of bring uh, more awareness to the uh, vibrations here towards the front of your mouth. Okay. Does that answer it? Okay. That, that's very helpful. That gives me a lot to work on. Okay. Awesome. Thank you so much Thank for you, seeing. Bye. Love Sounds you guys. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Bye. Take care. Let's do one more and uh, we'll call it a day. We still got about 40 people on the call. So it's slowly off ramping. Yeah. Off ramping. <laughs> hey guys. Awesome. Uh, we got one more, Matt. Yeah. I'm working on it. Here. Who raised it? It's hard to tell who's like, yeah, raising now, their hand hardcore. Who, I was uh, working on somebody that had volunteered, but they've already had to slip off the call. Sweet. So if you're still here and you really want to master class quick with Sarah, go ahead and chat with me. Chat it up. Hey, Christopher, you're on. Uh, let me find you. Chat it up. Here we go, Christopher. When you're ready, go ahead and activate your video and your audio. Christopher. Hey, there you are. Hey, guys. Hey. Hi, Christopher. So, welcome. Thank you so much for making some time. I sure do appreciate it. Um, my, my question is uh, really kind of a quasi-singing slash medical question. Um, and, and uh, Sarah, I appreciate you kind of bring us into your story because it actually brought me some hope. Um, uh, I was you now with a horrible head cold, uh, and uh, had a, a, a while you know, got over the cold, discovered my voice was definitely not what it used to be. I went and saw an ENT and uh, who kind of specialized in some vocal stuff. He, he scoped me, said, you have a sulcus vocalis, which is basically a palsied vocal cord. And, um, and basically what will happen is it will, I'll go up and I just never know where the, the, where the crack is in my voice. I never know where the break is in my voice. So it's very hard to, sing with any um any consistency um and uh they they said you know we could do vocal surgery but we might destroy your vocal cords i said mm, well that doesn't sound that great um and then they said we could do some injections that might help some um i'm i kind of want to try some kind of therapist maybe to so that i'm not jumping down that road of having somebody mess with my vocal cords and maybe really do more harm than good. Uh, so I, I guess part of it is I just really like some advice to, to know the road forward or to know what, what to do next. Yeah. Well, I will say, and you know, I'm sure you, I'm, I'm not really qualified to give medical advice sure. at all. Um, but I can say from my experience personally and sort of anecdotal, uh, from other friends who um, are singers, that uh, speech therapy can do a ton of stuff. Um, and 
it really can, it just does a lot. Like it can awaken paralyzed cords. It can help you adapt. Like you might not ever see uh, your cord functioning the way it did before, but um, you can learn to work around it and your body can adapt to it. Uh, so I think, I mean, I would definitely suggest either getting a referral from that ENT or like getting a second opinion because just from what I've, I've seen, there's just so many ways to diagnose different things that are going on with our cords. So it would probably be worth it to get a second opinion from a, a doctor that specializes in this and um, who has the staff to be able to help you recover like through therapy. Um, so, so, yeah. so let me ask you this, is, is there a particular type of speech therapist I need to be seeing for specifically for singing issues? Cause as you can tell, it really doesn't affect my, just my normal speech. Um, it's mostly just, a, a, the only time I experience it is when I'm singing. Um, so it, is there a particular type of speech therapist I need to see? Um, well, the ones that I had seen specialized in voice, like singing as well and taking the two and meeting them together. I wish Diane was on the call for this one because I think she does some of that. Um, I would say that you would probably want to work with both a speech path. Um, and also a vocal coach, especially mm -hmm. because you experience it the most in singing. Is there a place that you see it happening? So it's not happen. It doesn't happen in this register for you. No, ma'am. Uh, it, what, what's interesting is it's, it's not always when I'm going for the high notes. I mean, it's, so I, I used to be a, a true second tenor and my, my vocal range would get up to almost about a B above middle C kind of thing or an A above middle C, somewhere around in there. Uh, and now, I, you know, I went from about a two plus octave range to basically just having to hang out with an octave and basically in a baritone register. But even, even keeping it low, it can still crack on me. And, you know, I just like kind of caught, it, there, there's just very little reliability. What, uh, Christopher, what metro area are you near? What, what city and state? Uh, I'm uh, Augusta, Augusta, Georgia. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think, uh, I think we can get you Diane's information because she's, her and Jan probably have the doctor dude. There's probably a two doctor people, and then there's probably two speech people that they have that are probably high end that have already worked with, you know, they probably already filtered through the the people that don't understand music and the actual sure. issue so yeah we can hook you up with that, that would be sure. yeah. and i would say even something that you can do for now while well, i know my phone is kind of busted so if it's really echoey i'm very sorry um that uh one thing you can do now that isn't going to cause any damage um is well, two things. So I noticed that even in your speaking voice, you have a lot of something called vocal fry, meaning that you sort of hang out in a space that's down here, which is so great for, it's great, very great character for a speaking voice, but can sometimes cause extra stress on the chords. So it would be interesting to see if you just slightly pitched up when you spoke, does that make a difference in how it feels when you talk? So I'm kind of thinking a little lighter. Can you try that? I can, I can try. Um, man, I guess I don't know. I'm an old Southern boy. It's a lot to, a lot to figure out how to make that work. Um, it, what would, what would be a good tip for just kind of moving in that direction? I would say, if you go, hmm, like, hmm, mm -hmm. but hmm, hmm, yeah. So hmm, maybe on Monday. Maybe on Monday. Yeah, so you uh, at the end. But, you know, practicing hmm, maybe on Monday and keeping it all sort of in this space, you feel like a creeper, but try it. <laughs> hmm, maybe on Monday. I, I, I see what you're saying. Really try yeah. to go on more. Here. Yeah, and even just hmm, not maybe on Monday. 
right? Because we do this in our speech to emphasize things. But just if you take five minutes a day and try to sort of hang out in this space. Um, also, something that you can do is the warm up app that she was talking about. If you can do, I call them vocal trills. I think she called them motorboats. But going up slowly and trying to pinpoint, you know, where is this happening the most? Is it happening more when you run out of breath? Is it happening in certain pitches? You know, that will help you be able to have um, some more information too, okay. you know, discovering, is it random or is there a little bump on your cord or is it harder to put them together in certain spots? But so those are two practical things that you can do while you wait to kind of meet up with a professional. Awesome. Yeah, Christopher, I am uh, I'm texting my email address, mike at vineyardworship.com. You can just email me there and I'll connect you with Diane and okay. uh, the big cats in Atlanta. I mean, they, they might have an Augusta connection as well, but sure. um, I found sure. that in this world, once you get, if you can get the really musical people that have already met with the singer, or maybe they work primarily with musicians, it's just yep. a different game, yep. you know. Yeah, things solved really quick. So, thank y'all so much for your time. I sure do yeah. appreciate your help. Thank yeah. you, man. Much love. Thank awesome. You. Thank you, Sarah, for hanging on. Thank you, Matt, for hanging on. To our thirty folks left, we bless you. We thank you. This has been fun. Appreciate everybody. So uh, we're gonna sign off and take care. Peace. Peace.